With uh, Vice President and Senior Equities Fund Manager at Kotak AMC is with us now on this leg of the show. Harish, thank you very much for joining in. You know, I'm going to start with a very different sort of a debate and not going to ask you about stocks or a sector. It's a debate that we've been having here internally. Uh, a lot of this uh, block selling that's going on, right? Promoters are selling, some private equity in insiders are selling. And in a lot of these block trades, mutual funds have been buyers. So the big debate is whether all this insider selling is indicating some sort of a top for the market, at least, you know, in the short term, or whether mutual funds are actually the smarter lot because they're buying, seeing a further potential upside. What, what would you say? So, Sirvi, um, as, as we all know, every trade has a buyer and a seller. And um, uh, clearly, you know, the longer term horizon, uh, be it that of the promoters, be that of, say, slightly longer dated funds, which have horizons and mandates of seven, eight years, uh, are the longer term holders. And uh, in the market, obviously, we have all kinds of participants. Uh, at Kotak, uh, we, of course, would like to think ourselves as reasonably longer term investors. Uh, so, therefore, I think it is important to take into cognizance the fact that some longer term shareholders are giving way uh, to shorter term uh, horizon shareholders. And I think there is a message out there. But um, broadly, when we look at the overall context, uh, you know, generally, we, we get a sense that market typically can absorb in a given calendar year or a given 12 months, roughly about 1% of market cap as a potential supply that comes through before which the weight of the supply itself, you know, kind of pulls down the overall market. Uh, at today's market cap of, say, roughly about 300 lakh crores, that's an annualized number of close to about, um, uh, you know, close to about 3 lakh crores, or on a monthly basis, close to about 25,000 crores. Uh, I think in the last uh, month or 45 days uh, or so, we've seen that kind of a monthly run rate. Uh, of course, this has come after almost six, nine months wherein we didn't see any major supply because uh, prices were a lot more, a uh, lot lesser than where they have in the last three, four months. So I think under two, three months of this steady uh, supply that comes through, I think that in some sense itself will cool off the overall market from a pure liquidity point of view. Um, again, uh, this also includes IPOs and potential QIPs, et cetera, that come through, which is more uh, seen in the form of growth capital. Uh, which obviously is uh, is uh, kind of useful for companies to augur uh, for fresh capex and and to and to look at uh, newer streams of cash flows. So I would say I don't think that is anything uh, smarter or uh, dumber uh, from uh, from a money uh, management point of view. I think it's more a function that uh, we are, we are starting to see a reasonable amount of uh, companies which possibly complement our entire portfolio. And at least here at Kotak, that's how we are looking at such opportunities in a very selective fashion. Mm. Uh, Harish, uh, afternoon. You know, I know you guys are long-term investors, but how do you feel about the markets right now? Earlier today, we had Jeffrey's, uh, you know, Mahesh Nandurkar of Jeffrey's saying that maybe the Goldilocks scenario for India may not last uh, because crude is spiking up, uh, inflation has picked up, yields have gone up, and India has underperformed the emerging market basket in the last one month. But on the other hand, we had Morgan Stanley uh, taking India's position to the top spot in emerging market. Bofa raised the target price on the Nifty to 20,500 by the end of the year. So we're getting divergent views. Where do you stand on India? How do you feel? How comfortable are you at current levels? So I think I'll add to the confusion rather than clarify it. Um, so uh, if, if, he, if I take a slightly longer term assessment of valuations, uh, India's share of uh, market cap as a percentage of overall world market cap is at 3.35%. Uh, India's share of the world GDP uh, from an economic activity point of view is roughly again in the 3.3-3.4%. And uh, we all know that, you know, uh, say five or maybe this decade or so, uh, India will be one of the few regions and geographies which will lead the world in terms of economic activity. Now, what that number is, uh, you know, it's debatable that uh, finally what India delivers is uh, one has to wait and watch out. But I think there is a reasonable, uh, uh, you know, expectation and I would say a reasonable probability that India will lead uh, the rest of the world in terms of economic activity. So therefore, if you look at that in context, are we overvalued? I wouldn't think so. I mean, we are in the fair value possibly fair value plus zone, uh, especially given the last three, four months of activity. But in the in the bigger scheme of things, I think we are still uh, reasonably okay. 
Uh, of course, um, as we know that, uh, you know, there are both structural factors as well as cyclical factors at play. Uh, structural factors uh, which benefit India are reasonably well known and well discovered, uh, be that of, uh, you know, our very strong demographics, our improving per capita income, our, our, uh, our productivity enhancers like the digital stack, uh, the fact that there has been significant investments happening uh, on the infrastructure side. I think these are all reasonably well uh, flagged off and are possibly, uh, you know, uh, long-term trends. On the cyclical side, in the last three, four months, uh, as, uh, as, uh, as you read out uh, one of the strategies, I think India did benefit from some cyclical factors, uh, that of uh, crude correcting from 120 levels to, say, $75. Uh, you had the trade imbalance, which was, uh, you know, on the monthly run rate at $25, $30 billion at its worst. Uh, last year, uh, that has come down to anywhere in the 17 18 or $20 billion run rate, which is very manageable. And uh, uh, you you also had uh, a, an issue of, for foreign investors where they didn't really like China for various reasons. So I think a lot of these cyclical factors are likely to unwind. Uh, they are cyclical, uh, and therefore there will be pluses and negatives. And as long as one is cognizant of the structural factors, uh, we think that these cyclical unwinds are possibly a good opportunity uh, to increase allocation to equities. Uh, so that's that's the way we would look at it, uh, that it is in a fair values plus zone. Uh, things have heated up a bit in the last three, four months, uh, but uh, we still are constructive on equities over a medium term perspective. All right. Uh, hi, Harish. Uh, good afternoon. Well, as you're speaking, it seems the markets are sensing that we're going to be hearing a, a dovish uh, RBI governor tomorrow. Because as we speak, the markets have moved to the high point uh, of the day. I don't know how that's going to happen. Brent crude prices continue to move up. Now we're almost at around $87 per barrel. So let's see how that goes. But Harish, you know, I recall in one of our interactions, you were telling us about banking profits. As a percentage of the GDP, it's at the upper end. So maybe, in fact, you know, banks were getting fairly valued as a, a total uh, sect out there, as a sector. And the other point you made was some of these new age themes are looking interesting, but you'd rather not just buy one. Maybe if you want to look at it, you look at it as a basket. How, what's your view now? Because the banks, well, they seem to be under some pressure because of NIM com compression. Well, some of these new age themes are making the right noises. How do you approach both of them? So, Nigel, I think the view remains the same, uh, what uh, what we had discussed possibly a month back, uh, which is primarily that, uh, you know, we, we tend to take a, a longer term view on a, a lot of these trends. And as as you rightly recall, uh, banking profits uh, are close to about a percent of GDP, which is the highest that we've seen in the last 25 years. Uh, almost all sectors are cyclical. Uh, banking is definitely a cyclical sector. And uh, close to the top of the uh, earning cycle, one has to be really mindful that uh, you can have possible regulatory action, possible competitive pressures, uh, et cetera, which can, which can try and uh, blunt some of these, um, uh, if quote unquote, uh, say very elevated profit levels. And therefore, uh, which is why, uh, you know, we have a stance on the banking side. Uh, we have a lot of banking stocks in our portfolio. It's not that we don't own them. Uh, but relative to, say, benchmarks, etc., we are slightly lesser uh, tilted towards banking. Um, with regards to new age businesses, I think, uh, you know, uh, clearly there has been some kind of positive momentum in terms of price action that we've seen in the last six months or so. Uh, but more importantly, I think managements have uh, have started to, uh, you know, walk the talk. Uh, uh, the whole of last year, they had gotten the message that they have to bring in uh, uh, profits. Um, but I think the bigger message was to bring in cash flows, which were positive. Um, and slowly, I think we are starting to see that as a basket, a lot of promoters and companies, uh, you know, gravitating towards that. Um, it's also important, in my opinion, that, uh, you know, uh, the, the one negative of uh, these new age businesses right. is that the skin in the game for the promoters is very low. And therefore, there is an entire cap table, uh, you know, of the existing investors, uh, primarily made up of venture cap, uh, private equity kind of investors that needs to get through a complete reset. And we need to see some stronger hands get in. I think that process is still uh, awaited. Um, we, we still are, uh, you know, some time away from that. But at least on the fundamental thing, uh, it's kind of uh, gratifying that a lot of companies have mm. uh, kind of moved towards profitable growth rather than growth at any cost, uh, which was the mantra for a lot of these new age businesses, say, a couple of years back. 
and so uh, which is why we think that you know a basket approach is possibly better off uh, while uh, looking at new age businesses in our portfolios harish uh, thank you very much uh, for joining in have to leave the conversation here for now uh, have a lovely day get into a break on the other side we'll get you